Welcome back to every chest of China. In this class, we'll be learning how to make this beautiful half shoulder ruffle blouse. It has this beautiful design in front, and it also has this puff ruffle sleeve and this cute ruffle design that we have on the upper part. It's a very simple tutorial and it's beginner friendly. This is something you like to learn. Kindly stay tuned to the end of this tutorial. Thank you. Okay, so to make this, I'm going to be using a prep fabric for the main bodies and a satin fabric for my sleeve and the upper part. So this is an off shoulder body, so I'm going to be going off by 6 inches and you can see me removing 6 inches from my measurement before I start my actual measurement. So from there, I'm going to take my ham hole measurement. The ham hole is 9 inches, so I have my 9 inches marked like that and then my half length is 18 inches with allowance. So you can see what I have. So to create my ham hole curve, I'm going to measure my chest. So the chest measurement that I'm working with is 6 inches and that measurement is taken from one arm hole area to the other across your chest. So it's across chest measurement and for me that's 12 inches divided by 2 is going to give me 6 inches. So I have 6 inches from my center front here and again you can see that my back and front is folded the same way because I'm using a very stretchy fabric. I'm not going to be adding any zipper to this that's why i don't have a zipper allowance but if your fabric is not stretchy you may consider adding your one inch zipper allowance before you fold your fabric so now i have my ch cross chest measurement there and then on my hand hole line i'm going to measure my bust the bust is 40 divided by 10 divided by 4 sorry that's 10 inches so i have 10 inches here and the remaining one inch is going to be for my allowance so I'm going to use my curve driller to connect that to form my arm o curve. The fabric is stretchy and it's shifting a lot so I don't want to mark on it too much. Okay, so that's my arm o curve right there. I hope you can see that. So the next thing is to take your, your waist measurement. The waist I'm working with is 30 inches there by 47 and a half. So this is a very stretchy fabric. I'm not going to be adding allowance to it, okay? But if you're not using the stretchy fabric, I had allowance to it. In fact, you can even take from this. So I'm adding some allowance to it. If you want it really figure body organ, you cannot you may decide not to use allowance so that by the time you sew it, it's going to clench into the body. So now I'm going to connect all of this together and now you can cut it off. Okay, so for the neckline shape, you can shape your neckline anyhow you want. You can leave it flat like this, or you can make your neckline form of a U neckline or a sweet tart neckline or a V neckline, depending on what you want. Actually, so this is what I have so far. So I'm going to leave my neckline flat like this, like a square neckline. But if you want yours to be in form of U, you just measure like one or two inches downwards, depending on the depth that you want for your neckline and then you connect that to your to your to where your cross chest stops so this is what i have so now i'm going to remove one which is going to be my back to create the design that i have on the front so to create that design you are going to measure the depth that you want for me i want it to stop around my under bust area so remember we've already gone down by six inches so you will need to take note of that my under bust is around 14 inches so i have 14 inches here and then i'm going to mark it so to create that gap you don't want it too wide so that's not going to be exposing too much of your bust i want it to just be around one inch so for me to have one inch remember this is on food i'm going to measure half an inch just half an inch so that by the time i open it that is going to be one inch so the one half an inch now that i measured i'm going to connect it downwards so i'm just going to cut it like this because like i said i don't want to mark too much on this but please if you are not sure kindly use your marker to connect your half an inch so you can see me I've cut this out now, so by the time I open it out, this is what it's going to look like for me. You can see the U design that we have here. So this is for the front. So now the next thing for me to do, if you're going to be using your facing for this, so you can just cut it. 
you can just cut your facing just the same way you cut this by placing it or you can also use a bias to clean it up for a facing for a facing you're just going to fold another fabric and then place your pattern on it and then you trace exactly what you have out okay so that's how you cut your facing but if you're going to be using a bias you can also use a bias for this so after placing it like this i'm just going to cut out exactly what i have there okay so i have this now i'm going to bring in my scissors and then cut out that shape as well okay so it's totally up to you depending on what you want to use so now this is what it looks like you can reduce it depending on what you want or you can just make it a full lining but i'm just going to make mine to a facing like this so this is going to be my facing so now the next thing is for you to create the straps that you are going to use to form your design so you can use your same crepe fabric or you use your satin okay so i've gone ahead to create this strap now so i want to have five straps there so i'm going to cut out one inch i'm just going to add a little allowance so i'm going to cut like one and a quarter because i'm going to be sewing it very very tiny i don't want it too wide so i'm going to cut out one and a quarter in five places and then i'll go ahead and sew it so i have the first one i'm going to use it to cut out the rest So after cutting it out, the next thing is to mark the starting point. So the starting point is going to be around half an inch. Remember, we are still going to turn this in. So I'm going to mark the first point here. Then from there, you can measure what you have and then divide it by five. I'm just going to mark one and a half inch interval from there. So I have the first one, the second one. This is going to be the third, the fourth, and then this is going to be the last one. So now what I'm going to do now is to take my strap now and then go ahead and sew it on these two ends i'll sew this and bring it back to show us what we have so what you mark there you may decide to just replicate it on this side as well so i'll go back to the same machine to sew these five straps and then i'm going to bring it back to show us how we're going to turn it so i'm going to, to sew them now and you can see how tiny i sew it you can see it's not even up to quarter of an inch because if you sew by half an inch just bear in mind that your space becomes broader so if you don't want it too broad you need to factor that especially when you are cutting it out so if you know you can only sew by half an inch then you're not going to cut up to half an inch if your strap if the strap you want is just to be one inch by the time you finish sewing so when i turn it out this is what it looks like so now to neatly turn this like i said you can either use your bias or run and then use it to flip it or you can just top stitch on it or you cut your face like i have done or you cut your lining if it's a lining it's still the same way it's just going to be bigger but for the facing remember this is what we want we want to use it to cover it up like this so you're just going to flip it like this and then you match it all up and then sew it all around following the stitch line that i already have so i'm just going to place it right side facing right side and then i'm going to sew all around it so i'm going to head to sew it round as you can see and i've used it to cover it all up so you can sew in your aiming and so in your aiming gum to gum it down or you can top stitch on it whichever one you want so i think i'm just going to top stitch on it so when you're sewing this part after sewing it you make sure that this u part you notch it very well for it to relax because it's very curved so now after doing that the next thing you need to do is to place your front and back against each other and then you sew it by the sides Okay, so i'm going ahead to sew it together on this side as you can see so i've top stitched on this also but because i don't want my top stitching line to show on the right side so i just top stitched on the lining alone so by the time you flip it to the right side you're not going to be having any same line on the right side so that's how i want it that was why i decided to top stitch on you can see that the right side is clean without any stitches so then the next thing we need to do is to move straight to the sleeve so for my sleeve it's like a puff sleeve so it's going to be bigger than your actual normal basic sleeve 
so my fabric is about i'm just going to use the fabric that i have i'm folding both sleeves together so you first fold your fabric into two and then you fold into four so after folding now i'll just check what i have on fold i have about 14 inches for the width of my fabric and then the length should be your long sleeve length but i have about 19 inches so that's what i'm going to use so now to shape my handful i'm just going to bring in my actual fabric my actual bodies and then i'm going to place it on this okay on one side that's not the folded point part now on the other side which is going to be the open part then after placing it like this i'm going to trace out what i have as my hand hold remember we are still going to sew it to your body so it has to be exactly the same that's a simple way of doing this and then i'm going to do stream stream this up then i'm going to open up this part as well so for the end of your sleeve i'm not going to shape it okay you are going to use your elastic to gather it so before you can gather it this is what the sleeve looks like now so you can see that this is going to be bigger than what's going to be on your shoulder so you are going to gather it to form the exact thing that we want so i have about nine inches here and then i intend to use around four and a half to half an inch to five inches on fold so by the time i open it out now i'm going to gather this to my if it's four and half on foot then it means it's nine inches so this 18 inches now i'm going to gather it back to the nine inches that i want to be for my off shoulder okay so i'm going to gather this to nine inches and then for the hem for the hem on the hem of the sleeve i'm going to come up by around six inches okay five to six inches remember if this were to be your actual length you have something bigger then on that point i'm going to make a straight line there it's my ruler so after marking your straight line we are going to use our elastic to gather this back to your original round sleeve measurement okay so after marking if this mark is just to guide you i'm going to bring in my elastic now and then i'm going to measure where this is going to be so after measuring it now you cut it out and then you use your elastic to gather this so if it's not enough you can just gather it a little bit so that your elastic can take it all up like this so i'm going to use the elastic to gather it i'll do this now and bring it back to show us okay so i've gone ahead to gather it with my elastic you can see i've gathered it back to my wrist measurements where i marked and then on this hopper part remember it was like double of what we want so i have pleated it to the nine inches that i need on my shoulder okay you can see i have just about nine inches so i pleated mine you can also use elastic to gather it if that is what you want but this is what i have this is the first sleeve i can see that mine is not going to be a long sleeve it's, it's a bit short because that's the fabric that i have left so this is the other sleeve the next thing you need to do now is to bring in your bodies and then you sew your sleeve to your ham hole like this okay and then close it up okay so i'm gonna head to sew it as you can see it is joined to the bodies now and then i've gone ahead to close it on the underarm area so this is what we have remember that we did not hem the upper part of our sleeve and the upper bodies okay we are still going to use another fabric to cover all of that up so that is this is what it looks like on the right side so the last thing to do on the sleeve now is to create the belt so for my belt i have it can be as long as you want basically but i just have about a fabric of around 40 inches long and then i just fold and unfold the length is around two and a half inches so i've sewn it the next thing now is to turn it out neatly so after turning it out i'm going to get the midpoint and then sew it to my sleeve so i'm turning it now 
okay so i've turned it these are the two straps so what you just need to do is to close up this part that you turned it out from and then you iron it flat so after ironing it what you just need to do now is to fold it into two and get the midpoint so once you have your midpoint you are going to go to that place where you fix your elastic on the underarm of your sleeve and then you are going to attach it so that it's just going to flow freely on both sides so after doing that now the next thing now is to get the measurement of my round shoulder okay so that's from your sh from your sleeve area all the way to your chest line area so i'm going to take my tape now since i have the same thing on both sides the neckline is equal so i'm just going to measure one side and then divide the, and then multiply it into two so one side is giving me around 21 inches so i have 21 inches as my round round shoulder so multiplying that by two is going to give me 40 42 okay for my full round shoulder 21 for the front and 21 for the back so after getting that measurement now i'm going to use that measurement to cut out so to cut the upper part i'm going to multiply the 42 inches by 3 inches because i want it to be really full and that's going to give me about 120 something so i'm just going to use 120 inches so the length of my fabric is 60 inches which means i'm going to be joining two to have 120 inches so i have cut out the two that i'm going to join together to have my full 120 and then the width that i'm going to be using for this unfold is four inches so that by the time i finish sewing it i'll have about three and a half inches depending on what you want so now what i'm going to do is to join these two so that i'll have 120 inches by eight inches remember on fold was four by the time we open it out it's going to be eight inches and then because i have two 60 inches length by the time i join it i'm going to have 120 so i have a long strip of 120 inches by 60 inches and then i'm going to go ahead and gather it you can you can actually pleat it or gather but i'm going to be use, using a gather stitch to gather it then after gathering it so you can sew this in two ways actually you can just gather this then after gathering it you sew it to the to the neckline area all around like this and then you top stitch on it or you can just gather the two sides separately and then you just sandwich your your bodies in between it like this i hope you understand that is either you gather this by folding it you gather it on fold then after gathering it you just sew it to your neckline and then you weave the rough edges and top stitch so that it can stand like this or you gather it separately each of the hands separately and then you fold it in like this and then put your your upper part that's your neckline area you sandwich it in between them like this and then you sew it down whichever one you want to do is fine okay so i've gone ahead to sew it round you can see the way i've sewn it round so you can just go ahead and then search this upper part before you top stitch on it so you can also add maybe a, an interfacing to it if you want it to be firm but i'm just going to go ahead now and then top stitch and when you're sewing you can see that you you stop your you start sewing from one hand of that center front and then to the other you stop at the other hand you're not going to sew over the design that we have here or else that is what you choose to do so now after sewing it around this is what it looks like this is what the back looks like and i've also gone ahead to fix my strap so i just got the midpoint of the strap and then i sew it to the underarm area of the sleeve so this is for the first one and this is for the other sleeve so now i'll take this to the sewing machine now and then top stitch on this so that i can relax well because this is the style that i chose so if you want to gather yours separately you're going to gather the two ends of this fabric separately and then you just insert this neckline in between it that way you have a cleaner finish than this but if you choose to do it this way what you just need to do is to use your bias to cover the round of the rough edges all around or you just use your serger to serge it neatly so i've top stitched on this now this is what i have the next thing is to cut off all the thread and then i'll take this to the ironing table and iron it flat and then we'll take it to the mannequin so that we can see what this looks like. 
okay so this is what it looks like on the mannequin you can see our uh, gather i'm here to iron this so after fixing the gathers you just iron it really flat so the choice of fabric is also very important you can use strong fabric like satin or damask so that can stay very well on its own well i'm using a bridal satin for this which is quite soft so if you want to use fabric like this you just need to iron it or face into it just to strengthen the fabric a bit so this is what the sleeve looks like you can see what we have here you can either leave your strap hanging like this or you can tie it just like we have on the other sleeve so this is the design that we have at the center as well and this is what the full feel of the top looks like it's a very beautiful tutorial and you can see that it's simple to make this is something you enjoyed or you've learned one or two things from kindly like subscribe and comment on this video and i'll see you in the next one bye